Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be taking another look at the hydrogen bubbler system right here. And this is based on a huge request, an absolutely huge request. A Tuesday, right around noon my time, my phone started blowing up. So many of you guys were requesting that I test this setup right here using these gas valves, which are made of wolframite within the thermal you know, hydrogen bubbler system right here, which is a radiator system. So this would be a closed loop system. We'll get into the details of that, but that is all in a direct response to a video that Skystorm uploaded in his playthrough of Oxygen Not Included here, where he made a massive, an absolutely massive hydrogen bubbler system right here. So the other half of this is the perpetual motion things that you guys have been requesting that I look into a gajillion times since the very first video came out. And that is uh, either two ways. You either have a loop of pipes and then you leave, I guess, one space open and then it will continuously cycle right there. Or you can also do it with gas valves as well just because it will continuously cycle right there, taking the idea out that you don't necessarily need a pump in order to move the gas through it. The other half of that element is that gas apparently only loses temperature when it is static and not moving through a pipe. So you kind of, you have two layers of exploit things that you can take advantage of right there that you can get free perpetual motion of the actual motion of gas and also the Kind of perpetual energy reduction because you're not having to recool that gas even though that gas is still impacting the temperature of those liquid pipes. So we're going to break this experiment into a couple different parts. First off, we're just going to see right here if these Wolframite gas valves make any difference at all as compared to my current benchmark, which is just using uh, granite pipes right there, which have a thermal conductivity of 3.39. The big advantage or potential big advantage of this is using wolframite in these valves here, which may or may not contact the gas that is flowing through the pipes. And that therefore has a much higher thermal conductivity right there. And we did see previously in my experiments here, that when we went from obsidian pipes to granite pipes, there was a noticeable change in the watts per kilogram or the efficiency of that system right there. So a couple of the things I wanted to talk about here real quick here is, I'm sorry that I haven't necessarily been able to respond to a lot of your most recent comments here. I've been traveling and been out of town. It's just been absolutely hectic and busy, you know, wall to wall work. And then, you know, whenever I get a chance to sleep, I'll, I'll take it. I've had, you know, five hour nights and three hour nights and stuff like that. So it's been very, very busy. Like I said, you guys started blowing me up here. Everything I showed you right there, that was within the last four days. So I actually tried to record this episode on Tuesday uh, after after having about a 12 hour workday and traveling a thousand miles that day, just didn't have the energy to do it. So then I sat down and recorded this episode yesterday, or shall I say the first half of this, which was about two hours of footage right there. Unfortunately, I ran out of hard drive space in that recording right there, causing my MP4 file to go absolutely corrupt. And it just was taking way too long to recover that. So. Hence, here I am on Thursday recording this or attempting to record this for the third time this week. Hopefully we do it right. Hopefully it all goes well. Fingers crossed that nothing goes corrupt. So not only are we going to look into what I'm calling the thermal equipment stacking, which is kind of something that we saw here in my very first video that I was doing on the hydrogen thing, where I tried to take the shower cooler. Remember this, the shower cooler has a thermal conductivity of 4.5 right there. And I've tried to put that on here to see if it would have some sort of stacking effect with those valves um, or with the pipes on there to see if there's a physical connection between the stuff that's in the background and the foreground to see if it's going to directly cool it or not. So the other thing I want to do is kind of redefine why we're calling this thing a hydrogen bubbler right here. And that is all because of Bill Wolfie's original post as far as like a, uh, a, a, a method for purification for polluted oxygen right here. And he called it a hydrogen bubbler. Therefore, the community seems to have really attached onto that name right there, which is a, the fact that because the hydrogen is bubbling up through the polluted oxygen, causing it to liquefy and then distill into a clean gas right there. So that's why I'm using the term hydrogen bubbler is because it's known within the community. If we start to look up what this thing is actually in real life, because it truly is something that is in real life, these things are known, I guess, as according to Wikipedia here, cryogenic air separation units. And I think this is really cool that we're actually able to simulate something that is used in real life in production to purify oxygen or hydrogen or whatever other gases. These things are real legitimate things that happened in life and there's both closed systems and open systems as well, which is exactly what we have here. So we have a closed system. So there's 
only the energy that is transferring between the two. So we have a very cold stuff in pipes, and then we have an open system, which is, you know, this filtered sort of gas on gas system. I think it's really cool that we're sort of investigating the same sort of thing that engineers are looking at in the real world. All right, so enough nerding out on that stuff. The last point here I want to uh, cover is that once we test this perpetual motion sort of exploit thing, we'll also be able to get a really good idea of how efficient this liquid pump here. There's a pretty cool recommendation for potentially making this liquid pump a fair bit more efficient or maybe removing it altogether. So I hope to cover all of that in this episode. Let's get on into the experiment. All right, so what I have set up here is the same sort of thing that Sky had set up in his video right here. And by the way, he's totally cool with me testing this and everything. There were comments and stuff on this video before, sort of some of the drama that happened with it, which was unfortunate, but I'm glad to see that things were, you know, we got past that. And so I'm not going to even talk about it. The, the thing is, what he has going on here is he has all these gas pipes behind these, these, valves and that's the same setup that i have over here so if we take a look at the gas valves real quick you'll notice that there's little gas pipes that run between these valves and these valves right here are obviously made of wolframite so therefore it has a higher thermal conductivity so let's go ahead and run this thing you can see the gas form you know formation that i have right here one of the things is that there's a slightly longer run back to my balancing chamber and that's something that was not used in sky's video right there but this is needed if you're not using some sort of perpetual motion thing. Now, just so you're curious, I am calling it an exploit, but I really don't say it in a negative way. It's just a different way of playing the game, but it's only gonna be available until they fix it. All right, so this system is really close to being balanced already, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for a little bit, and then I'm going to do a 10 cycle benchmark test. So let's crank up the speed and get this sucker going. Boom! All right, here we go. Nice, good start to the test. Boom, we're up and running. Now I am running this system at the exact same temperature that I ran my previous experiments at. So that is with this, uh, this thermal switch. Come on, come on. This thermal switch up here, which I can't seem to click on. There it is. And that's set all the way down to negative 238 degrees. So it's coming out of this pipe, out of this thermal regulator, at a temperature that was it within 0.1 degree of becoming a liquid. So it's very, very cold. It's at the limit right there of how cold we can make it inside this system. One of the other materials that you can actually make this gas pipe out of is steel. And steel has a thermal conductivity of 54. Now I was doing a little bit of experimenting with smelting within this game, and I've been able to refine tungsten using the cell painter. I haven't been able to do it anywhere else. So I'm guessing sometime here in the future, we're actually gonna go ahead and have some sort of piece of, of equipment where you can refine metals and therefore produce, you know, things like steel right there, which have a very high thermal conductivity. And if that finds its way into a gas pipe, we could see a big difference right there. So this number is 304. Okay, there we go. I'm guessing that equipment would run off of propane. So some of the other gases we have available to us are like carbon dioxide, which you can make into a gas, we can also use helium, which can get extremely cold before becoming a liquid. So that would be pretty cool. I'm not sure if we can actually pump that around right now. I've heard yes and no. The hydrogen, as we can see right there, we also got oxygen, phosphorus, that is available around. Propane, which I'm guessing is gonna be used. Propane is useful in power production right there. I'm guessing it's also flammable. And crude oil in the form of liquid. We can also do chlorine in different states, so. You can even go crazy with mercury, right? So there's so many different liquids down here that we haven't really touched on yet But it'd be kind of cool to see if we can actually use helium for the same sort of system right here Another thing you guys have been talking about and requesting a lot is to throw liquid pipes up in here You know to also cool things with liquid pipes now One of the things we're doing is we're getting it very very cold and we're probably cooling this liquid oxygen a little bit further than it needs therefore reducing the efficiency of our system you know because we only need to cool a gas down to its you know minimum or should we say its maximum temperature that it can be at a liquid before it can boil off and become clean again but if you're cooling it further then you can also pipe it back around and get a little bit of that energy back out of it and maybe like a pre-cooler system but one of the other things that are available down here if we start looking at like crude oil 
Look at this, its freezing point is negative 273.2 degrees Celsius. So that opens up an opportunity to potentially really, really cool crude oil and start pumping it around. I haven't been able to find it out here in any of the biomes, but you know, at some point that's gonna become available. So you can start getting that ideas, you know, as far as different ideas, you can comment here for the future, as far as how we might potentially use liquid pipes in connection with everything else here, maybe using a multi-stage cooler. I think Michael has talked a little bit about that, one of the commenters on my video, to potentially set up a multi-stage cooling system that is increased in efficiency. I don't know, we'll have to see. Different ideas, just to get the juices flowing, you know? I got several cycles to sit here and count numbers. 606.2. All right, last cycle. Small observation. As this liquid column has become taller, there's more mass in the bottom tile than there is with the oxygen that's on top of it. So there's some compressive qualities that are going on there as far as mass. It may be a small thing, but it's a thing. So I figured I'd mention it. All right, so here's my results for the thermal stacking Wolframite valves right there. So that's this experiment down here, which I went ahead and I did 10 cycles. The reason I did 10 cycles is because that's a little bit longer run back. So therefore, I think that pump might run longer, but more less frequently, you know, because it's got a longer path. So some days were a little bit higher on the power and some days were a little bit lower. Therefore, I ran it twice as long to get a better average. And the core results that we want to see right here is it's producing on average 150.88 kilograms a day. And it's consuming on average 178.99 uh, kilojoules per day. So that gives us an efficiency number of 1.98 watts per kilogram. Now, if we take this number here and compare it to the granite only pipe at the exact same temperature, which I've, I've started using over here, uh, what we'll see is that that number is 1.92. So we see 1.92 there, and then we see 1.98 there. So it's slightly less efficient to actually use Wolframite valves within that system. Now, why is it? What's going on here? Why are we not getting a huge increase in efficiency? And I think that has to do with how the game is currently designed as far as its equipment and thermal conductivity and that whole stacking thing that a couple of you guys have been talking about many times here in the comments. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So right here in operation, let's take a look at this gas valve right below this piece. We've looked at this piece several times. What we're seeing here is that that gas valve is currently at negative 24 degrees Celsius right there. The polluted oxygen is at negative 26 degrees uh, Celsius. So those numbers are really not that far off. And you'll see that the polluted oxygen every once in a while dips back down to the same temperature as the gas valve. So there is some sort of retained sort of heat energy within that gas valve because it has some thermal capacity right there, some, some specific heat capacity that it holds onto. So that does play some sort of factor here. But what we are also seeing though is that there's not as much granite pipe within the system as compared to just a solid radiator of granite pipe. However, if the gas is flowing through these granite pipes, it should be cooling these gas valves down to a very low temperature. So we should see numbers that are negative like 200 degrees Celsius because we have our hydrogen coming in here at negative 250 degrees Celsius way down here. Look at this, negative 252 degrees Celsius. That's super cold, super close to the liquefaction state right there. However, that valve is not at that same temperature all the way, you know, you know, even up here. So look at this. The gas pipe contains hydrogen at negative 250 degrees Celsius. However, the gas valve on top of it is only at negative 28 degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and turn this stuff off and we'll see exactly what's going on here. So by turning off these valves, we're not gonna bring any more polluted oxygen into this facility right here. And I'm gonna replace all of this polluted oxygen with a vacuum. All right, so here's a really good example of what's going on here. So we have the gas valve, and that gas valve is at negative 5.8 degrees Celsius currently. Inside of this gas pipe back here is some really, really cold hydrogen at negative 251 degrees Celsius right there. And you can see the gas pipe is continuing to get colder and colder and colder. However, despite that gas flowing through here and all of that stuff that's going on, the gas that is running through that pipe or the pipe temperature itself is not connected 
to that valve. So that valve is only transporting, you know, teleporting gas from this side to that side at a given rate. And that's the only thing happening right there. It's not physically in contact with that gas. Therefore, it's not cooling as that gas is flowing through it. It's also physically not contacting the pipes that are in the background here. So it's not, you know, so there's no conductivity of thermal energy there. So unfortunately, while this is a very, very creative idea to use wolframite in this big sort of expansive arrangement right here, there doesn't seem to really be any benefit to doing it. Now, that's not to say that sometime in the future here that these will be connected and the the, the gas that's running through these valves will suddenly impact that. In the current build of the game, I'm saying there is currently no point in doing this. However, let's go ahead and crank up the perpetual motion machine here and see what happens. So I think to do this, all I'm going to need to do is reroute this down and back in and then just remove a couple of tiles and it should start to continuously function. And there we go. See, now it's starting to come out and it's going to have to go back in as things are, you know, starting to happen. It just needs to start clearing some space there. So if I go ahead and remove that block right here, what we'll see is we have a nice cold loop right here and this is going to continuously move right here so it's temperature look at that negative 252 degrees celsius constantly and it's always in motion every time it's inside of this area here so this should not cool down all right so these things are just constantly running now let's go ahead and introduce some gas into this and see what we can get so one big advantage to this thing here is that we should be able to keep all of the gas inside of this system here right around negative 250 degrees Celsius. If it is true that we don't ever have to cool this gas more, then we should allow it. That, that means it's going to be as cold as actual as possible. <laughs> and right now I can see things already turning into a solid. They're so cold. <laughs> There's also these little blobs of like solid oxygen that are just kind of bouncing around. That's kind of funny. I personally think it'll be really, really interesting to see just how much power this pump consumes. Especially after we go ahead and like tweak it a little bit. All right, so let's boost the game speed up again. Here we go. Burn, 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 burn. So fast. All right, so we'll start the experiment five cycles at 314. All righty. Who's ready for some results of the perpetual motion magic machine? And just to see how efficient it is. Here's my results. So. Here we have it. We have the thermal stacked valves perpetual motion test right here. And as you probably sort of already expected, because this has more or less the same thermal properties as many of the experiments before, despite everything being still very, very cold. If you look at the gas temperatures here, still negative 252 degrees Celsius. So that temperature is not dropping. We're still only producing uh, 156 kilograms of oxygen per day right there. So it is a little bit more in that, you know, some of this gas is a little bit colder at the top, therefore the difference in temperature is greater, so the rate of change is faster, as far as my loose knowledge of thermodynamics goes, at least. That's why I believe that's working. So there is a slight advantage to having that gas be a consistent coldness throughout those all those pipes. The advantage here, though, is that we're not running this gas pump or the thermal regulator to keep the gas cool. So that gives us a little bit of savings when we're down to 135.5 kilojoules per day. Therefore, giving us our highest efficiency rating, as we would expect, of 1.45 watts per kilogram of oxygen, which is surprisingly high when you stop to think about it. So when you compare the first experiment here where we used our gas pump as compared to the perpetual motion solution, what you'll see is that we did save in watts per kilogram However, it's not a huge savings. I mean, we're still talking 868 joules a day right there. So when you start to look at some of these other numbers right here, like kilojoules or watts per duplicate, we're seeing 52 kilojoules per duplicate as compared to 71 kilojoules. So that pump is still sucking up a lot of power. So what is the difference between that number minus that number? That's a difference of 43.47 kilojoules a day right there. Of course, that would also equal a difference of 0.5 watts per kilogram of oxygen right there. So there's a difference. So clearly, while we do have a perpetual motion machine, it's still not anywhere near as efficient as it could be because you have to use that pump. So we got to make that pump more efficient. 
Now I can't necessarily find the comment that is talking about the pump. I think this one right here, this guy's talking about the using basically the same sort of concept, using a thermal switch so that once things are flooded, that thermal switch flips and then turns on so that you're always pumping the full volume through whatever it is you're trying to do. So be it be it the the air pump up here, so maybe this has a little bit more volume so that you can get a full pull on that thing every single time and then introduce a full pull onto that thermal regulator or the same sort of concept applies to this liquid pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down into a little bit of a pit and I'm going to leave a block open for a thermal switch right there that will be activated on the temperature of the liquid oxygen. So at that point, once that liquid oxygen is down there, it'll flip that switch and then turn the pump on and move a lot of liquid oxygen. So you won't get a steady flow of liquid oxygen coming out of this unit. You'll get big bursts of liquid oxygen. So let's go ahead and see how that works out. Now here's a really, really good example of something we might want to use Wolframite for. Right here. Boom. So that is going to rapidly reduce in temperature once the liquid oxygen comes in contact with it. If we can get this just right, then hopefully it will only turn on when it's submerged in that liquid. Otherwise, I might want to use a more resistive material, you know, I guess maybe copper or uh, probably gold amalgam would be a good option right there. Just to like kind of give it a little bit more resistance. I don't know. Let's build it and find out. You can make mercury heavy watt wire. Like that just seems like a really bad idea. <laughs> There's a new challenge. Which, speaking of which, I really want to get back to making some challenges here. For whatever reason, we're just like, we are obsessed with the hydrogen bubbler right now. I will get back to doing challenges. I want to have some more chaos. Kill 100 duplicates in a night. You know, just life. Okay, so if it's colder than negative 187 or so, then it should turn on. There we go. Yeah, look at it pump now. Oh, and then it turns off. Yeah, interesting. This is a different way of doing it. That's a pretty clever idea. I think there's definitely something to this. Uh, MR Keladescopies, maybe? Maybe that's your name right there? Again, like I was saying, I don't think that was the only comment that was leading to this sort of idea, but you're definitely highlighting it in your like crazy setup here. I don't even, this thing's like, what is this madness? <laughs> <laughs> what crap I got boiling damage yet again let me go ahead and turn this down a little bit more all right it's getting dangerous all right so let's do this since I have a perpetual motion machine at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put granite right here it's just gonna come back over and then I will flip that back to absolute over here just like so and then I'll delete a couple of links right there and that should maybe make this a little bit colder right there and potentially fix our problem. There we go. Still a perpetual motion machine. I'm just trying to cool a little bit more here. Now I know I should still be getting about 150 kilograms a day because the thermal properties of what's going on here really hasn't changed in shape or size. And I'm guessing once we start to experiment with shape and size, we're really going to start to see some different numbers. Which brings up another interesting question. I've asked you a lot of questions on this one. What's going to make the biggest difference? Height or width? I think width is... I'm going to go with width, but we'll see. Or maybe it has nothing to do with that. Maybe you can circulate the gas. I saw some comments about trying to circulate things, you know, around. Because my system seems to be a little bit of left bias, and there also seems to be the most polluted oxygen coming in the top right, which is, you know, the furthest distance. Mm, I don't know. There's many more things to talk about here. You know, sitting here watching all this, like, fluid flow... It really makes you have to go to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> it's like watching a waterfall. <laughs> you know, the other thing I didn't mention at all is the fact that we're not just using a liquid pump here. We're using a gas pump to introduce gas into this chamber. So since it was off the screen, I slightly forgot about it, but that's obviously where a good chunk of power is coming from. So we definitely can't forget about that. So it's not just this liquid pump that's causing stuff to be consumed. It's definitely, you know, a gas pump down here that's pumping stuff away. And by the way, look at all the morbs I got down here. It is like a morb city. <laughs> definitely got to be some investigation on, you know, how long does it take morbs to spawn and get some real statistics on that somewhere in the future. So many ideas in this video. 
guess that's what's happening when you're sitting around waiting for <laughs> oxygen to show up. So there's certainly no lack of oxygen being introduced into here. Just taking its sweet time to pump out. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, at the end of this cycle, I'm going to paint this into a vacuum. And then I'm going to let it run for 20 cycles. And then I'll come back and count up all the oxygen that's been produced in this system. And then also count up all the power and then divide it by 20. So it'll be a longer run, but that's what I'm going to do. Ah, oh, I just realized I wasn't recording for quite a long time. All right, well, I finally got this system here set up. I think what happened is, like, maybe I got a shortcut key. Maybe Spacebar turns this thing on and off. That's dangerous. All right, so <laughs> I finally got this system working out here pretty good. It took a long time to get this thing tuned just right, but it looks like once I got this switch set to negative 198.2 right here, and the system primed up, it seems to be working really, really good. So it moves about 20 kilogram per pull right there, so the, the liquid builds up here, and then it turns on, and there it goes, it moves on over. And that, in turn, you know, makes a pretty predictable amount of oxygen. So every time that turns on, it's creating 20 kilograms of, or it's moving 20 kilograms of liquid oxygen, giving us a, clearly it's gonna end up being 120 kilograms of oxygen a day. So it isn't producing quite as much, probably because it's not creating a constant vacuum on this gas, so the pressure is a little bit higher. All right, finally coming up on the end of this test, I ran it over 10 cycles, just to make sure it's gonna be a nice good number. All right, so here's a nice, interesting result right here. So. If we compare our perpetual motion setup right here, where we were running that pump constantly, we still had a pretty high usage of kilojoules per day, 135.5. And of that, we were finding out that about 61 or so of those were from the gas pump itself. I, I think that part of the video might have accidentally gotten missed because I didn't have it recording at the time, but I did have this running where it wasn't really pushing any liquid in. It came out to 61 kilograms a day just to run that gas pump, which is way down there that feeds the system. So what that means is the amount of power it takes to run this liquid pump is basically nothing. We're talking about like three kilogram kilojoules of energy right there. So the average here over 10 cycles was 64.2. That's pretty awesome. That's a big difference right there. So using a thermal switch to flick on and off that liquid pump is a great idea. It takes a little bit to get going, but once you get it there, I mean, look at it go. Oh, this one's like getting a little excited. Whoa, careful there. Every once in a while it does go up and down. You'll see those numbers change a little. But look at that, watts per kilogram of oxygen right there is 0.94. Let's go ahead and quickly adjust this for the thermal energy use that we've excluded by using perpetual motion. Uh-oh, somebody died. Oh no, they're starving to death! No, oh, me! Get some food! I was so focused on my numbers! Marie! Ah, crap. Another duplicate has died for the cause. In the name of science! At least Meep is living on. Alright, so let me go ahead and just get rid of this. So there we go. Adjusted for thermal energy right there is 1.58. Uh, of course, if we're using that that perpetual motion, it's 0.94 right there. So 1.58, as compared to our next sort of baseline result, is a pretty good savings over 1.92. Matter of fact, that is the lowest baseline number, the most efficient number we have seen in the game yet, not using any exploits right there, or adjusting for not using any exploits. So running the pump like this, that's a really good idea. All right, so what are the takeaways for this video? Well, first and foremost, thermal stacking items on top of each other just simply doesn't work out. And having Wolframite in your system currently just doesn't really work uh, the way that we would like it to work. So in the current build of the game, that's really a no-go. Second thing is that the perpetual motion doesn't necessarily save you um, all the energy that it takes to run a system like this. And the last point that we have right here is using a thermal switch right here to only flick that pump on and off when it's fully surrounded by liquid is a nice, nice energy saver. So that's a great little tip for us. I think that's the way forward if you want to go ahead and build something like this and you want it to pipe to somewhere else. Obviously, I'm going to try to test a siphon here in the future, but this is something we should take note of. And we should see very, very similar numbers if we're actually using a siphon system right there. 
However, I need to go ahead and edit this video so I can upload it tomorrow because I've been trying to get her done all week. And if you do want to leave a suggestion for me down there in the comment section below, I would ask that you keep it into a nice short format because I got a lot of these to read through. And there's been many essays and it does take a lot of time. So thanks for helping me out there. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want me to make more of these videos, go ahead and let me do know down there. I take a look at all those and you guys have been doing an absolute awesome job recently. So I've been making a lot more of these videos. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out. Please tell me this one recorded. No more problems. No more pro- Yeah, there we go. It's still running. Fingers crossed for not being corrupted.